good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. My name is Valen Kirtley. Level is out of studio, but just for this week. I'm glad you're able to spend some time with me for another exciting episode of TLC, where we bring you today a hockey trailblazer and we chat about awesome women in sport. You're welcome to join in the conversation on social media. It's so easy. On Twitter, it's at sports at SABC, at Lebumutswedi, at Valen Kirtley, if you like. Hashtag the Ladies Club. You can also use that hashtag on Facebook. SABC Sports is there too. And you can even hashtag us on Instagram. So as a lady that has represented the country close to 300 times at all the major tournaments when it comes to hockey, last year she played in her fourth World Cup in London. Shelley Russell-Jones is here. She's our game changer. Good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. Thank you for having me. Okay, so before we start speaking about all things sport and life and family, why hockey and how did you get involved in hockey? Um, I came from a very sporty family. Everyone in my family played sport. Um, so naturally, I grew up on the side of a, a rugby field or a cricket field. And um, I think when I went to junior school, I played every single sport I could possibly come across. So um, I'd rush from the netball court to get to the hockey field. And then I think it must have been, you know, the fast pace and the energetic properties of hockey that just attracted me to it. And also the fact that it's a team sport. Um, I'm quite a sociable person, so <laughs> I love the team, the team aspects of, of it. And yeah, I just ended up loving hockey and yeah, I started concentrating on it in high school. Who would you say inspired you most in your career? Is there one person that you can kind of single out or maybe a figure when it comes to hockey that's really been inspirational and motivational for you? Um, I think growing up, I was very fortunate to have a lot of sort of inspirational people around me within the hockey circle. Um, at junior school, we had a, an ex-national player who was our coach, Ingrid Dane. And then when I went to high school, we had Roz Howell, who was the national coach at the time, mm -hmm. coaching us. So I was always surrounded by national players and national coaches. So it was taking a little bit from each player that um, I used to find very inspirational. Your yeah. path was kind of mapped out when you went to Waverley, yes. wasn't it? <laughs> All right, before we get deeper into our conversation with our game changer today, Shelley Jones, we'd like to set the tone with an inspiring quote. This week's words of wisdom come from Miriam Makeba. She says, girls are the future mothers of our society and it's important that we focus on their well-being. Miriam Makeba, or Mama Africa, she's fondly known, was a South African music icon whose songs were often adored by people all over the world. The icon took Afropop and African jazz to the world stage, starting with her first solo album in 1960. She not only became one of the most powerful voices to emerge from Africa, but also an important hero in the struggle against apartheid. She died, sadly, of a heart attack during a concert in Italy back in 2008. May her soul rest in peace. We're going to continue chatting all about inspirational women and our game changer who's in studio. But let's catch you up on the latest news when it comes to women's sport. The 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup in France will be shown live in more than 200 countries. This level of coverage of a World Cup offers another sign that the times are certainly changing. Our national team, Banyana Banyana, will be among the 24 women's teams taking part in the tournament, which runs from the 7th of June to the 7th of July. We wish them all the best. We'll be right back with the Ladies Club. Welcome back. You're watching the Ladies Club. Please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, anywhere you'd like to get hold of us, we'd love to hear from you. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the Ladies Club. Let's continue our conversation with hockey star Shelley Jones. She started her international career as a striker and developed into an attacking left side midfielder whose ability to tackle is a hallmark. While continuing her career and balancing her family life, she's been developing the future generation of stars with the Investec Hockey Academy, where she is the general manager. She's played in the FIA World Cup, the Olympic Games and the Commonwealth Games more than once and with each tournament she lifts her name even higher on everybody's list of favourite hockey players. Most memorable tournaments, I wonder, I wonder. Shelley, what would you, which one would you say for you really stands out? 
Look, I could speak about my debut because obviously that was such a special moment. Running onto the field in green and gold for the first time is something that really is quite indescribable. But um, I think I'm going to go with the gene generic answer of the Olympic Games. I think supporting Team South, I mean, being a part of Team South Africa yeah. on a massive world stage like that really is nothing that comes close to that kind of feeling. So. And you didn't get to do it just once, you got to do it twice? Exactly, exactly. It definitely creates a little hunger inside of you. I'd love to be able to go to another Olympic Games, but um, we'll see. We'll see because there was a little announcement that you and your husband Craig made on social media recently. Congratulations, we're expecting the first Jones baby to arrive soon. Yes, um, I'm four months pregnant currently so we're very excited due in september sometime hopefully we've got a future little hockey player whether it's a boy or girl <laughs> <laughs> coming so i mean how how are you able then to manage you know just life in general because you've managed to do it as the gm of the hockey academy and your playing career but now there is going to be an added consideration yeah, look, I think that's one thing sport teaches you, how to manage your time and how to juggle many things at once. We've always had to do it. We were always studying and away on the national team at the same time. You know, we had some teammates who were studying law while on tour with all their case study work. And sure. so um, we make it happen. So I look forward to the challenge, I must say. Um, do you think that's what makes a South African sportswoman almost more dynamic because they are having to excel at a certain level, most of the time against, you know, an international, um, international teams and international players that have got far better infrastructure and they still happen to do life and they still manage all the other things that they have to do. I would definitely say that contributes to our sort of fighting spirit. You know, we've got this diehard spirit as a South African women's hockey player because I do think we put up with a lot of stuff that maybe professional teams don't. And um, yeah, we all sort of got our careers on the side as well as playing. And as you say, it's busy, busy life. And yeah. It's been quite difficult for hockey, for women's hockey, um, since the team didn't go to the Olympic Games in 2016. Certainly that's how it's looked from the outside. What's it like being in the heart of the sport over the last couple of years? Yeah, that was obviously a devastating time for hockey, but, you know, since then we've really tried to focus on, on what we can do to bring us back to the same level that we were. Um, we've had a tough four years where our program hasn't looked like, you know, our previous years before that. Um, we didn't have as, ma as many international matches and not traveling as much. So unfortunately, where we were almost breaking into top 10 on the world stage, mm -hmm. we now ranked 15th, which is quite sad to see. And um, it's becoming increasingly more difficult to gain ranking points, considering we're not taking part in things like the pro league mm -hmm. um, that's overseas. So it is difficult. Um, the last four years have been tricky, but um, hopefully, things change. One thing that does seem to be positive though is the amount of development that's happening when it comes to hockey. Not only what you guys are doing with your academy, but everywhere I look I see more and more junior schools, which is a great thing, actually picking up the sport and offering it to the students. No, it is one of the largest mixed gender sports um, that's played at school level and you'll see it by all the new astroturfs being laid down on a daily basis and just sort of scattering throughout South Africa. So it's fantastic to know that the sport is growing um, so nicely. Um, it would just be lovely to see it translate onto a national stage. So it's keeping all those players that we, you know, gaining the interest in junior schools and senior schools to stay playing hockey at a, you know, an after school university level. You working with those youngsters all the time and what's your take on, you know, the future for hockey in South Africa, just looking at the talent that we've got? Oh, as you say, talent is the word that comes to mind when I speak about South African kids that we're coaching. There is so much talent in our country and, you know, I think it also comes from such an outdoor lifestyle that we all live, you know, we've all grown up outdoors and, yeah, you know, we've just got natural sports people in this country and so it would be so it's so lovely to see 
that there are things like the Investec Hockey Academy and other academies that have opened up where you can sort of nurture this, that kind of talent and expose it to the right kind of people. And, um, you know, then hopefully channel those people in the right direction so that we're seeing, seeing the fruit of all of that. I think it's also because the, especially when it comes to women's hockey, it looks to me that the former players, they don't get lost to the game. They actually plough back, much like you're doing. I know, I've been so fortunate that I took my passion and it's become my job. So um, being able to, you know, work in hockey with the Invest at Hockey Academy. And I know a lot of the other players, as you say, have done the same. So it shows South African hockey players are definitely passionate about the sport. You have to be to play it. Mm. And um, it's just so lovely to be able to give back and see the passion um, being born in younger players. Well, we're going to be speaking about another former player. She's not based in South Africa, but our trailblazer today is former national captain Marsha Cox, and Zanzi's hockey legend and one of the world's most capped hockey players with more than 330 caps. She made her debut for the South African team back in 2001 against the United States of America and captain the national side from 2006. Marsha represented South Africa at the 2004, 2008 and 2012 Olympic Games as well as the 2002 2006 and 2010 Hockey World Cups. She was also recognized globally being nominated for the FIH World Team three times in 2007, 2009 and 2010. Late in 2015, Marsha retired from professional hockey 14 years after making, her, making hockey her career. You've had the privilege of uh, playing alongside Marsha for a number of years and reaching 300 caps. Is that something that you'd like to do? I've always had that as a goal to reach 300 caps. And as we spoke about earlier, the last four years has made that tricky because we haven't had as much international competition. But um, I think that will still always be a goal. So hopefully, <laughs> having kids, I've seen lots of Previous players do it, they have kids and they bounce back even stronger um, and more resilient. So we'll see what happens. And yeah, that, that 300 cap still sits there as a goal for me. <laughs> what was it like playing uh, with Marsha and, you know, being a teammate of hers and, and now a friend for so long? Marsha was my captain when I first made the team and obviously through most of my career she was playing. Um, she's an unbelievable player and an unbelievable leader. So. I think just to have learned from her and been able to work off her, um, I still think when she left the team, there was a massive hole left in our midfield because um, she was such a strength in the midfield. So um, it's obviously nice to see young players try and fill that, but Marsha is hard boots to fill. So um, yeah, we missed her when she left and yeah, I've, I've always find it a privilege to have played with her as many years as I did. No, certainly a legend of the game. We're going to be chatting more about hockey and life and so much more with our game changer Shelley Jones when we return with the Ladies Club. Stay with us. the ladies club remember so easy to get in a conversation with us on social media just use our hashtag hashtag the ladies club we're going to continue this conversation with our game changer Shelley Jones in just a short while but let's take a look at what else is trending when it comes to women's sport nine athletes clocked 12 FINA qualification times and seven para swimmers posted 14 different IPC world championship qualifying times at the recent South African national aquatic championships in Durban Six of those FINA World Championship qualification times came from female swimmers, while Eleni Ferreira was the shining light for the Paris swimmers when it comes to the ladies. She qualified for Worlds in three different events. Well done to Erin Gallagher, Natania Fanikok, Tatiana Schoenmacher and Kaylin Corbett, who qualified on the able-bodied side for the Worlds, which will be taking place in July this year in South Korea. Uh, we mentioned your school and how much of an impact that was. I said that, you know, going to uh, Waverley for girls, it kind of like laid the path for, for where you were going to go. How, it, how influential was it that you went there? I was quite determined to go there because of its hockey reputation. So I did have to plead with my parents. We didn't live close. So it was a 45-minute drive every day to get to school. Wow. But um, 
thank really grateful that they al allowed me to go there because it really was influential it was fantastic fantastic place to really get the fundamentals when it came to hockey um, we played in the St Mary's Hockey Festival and I don't know if you've seen it recently but it's grown now they've had their 20th year of it and it's become this massive icon for schools tournament and um, yeah it was it was all sort of happening while I was still at school so um, really great choice and yeah great fun foundation uh, you mentioned the fact that your parents were supportive just how important was that very very important to have supportive parents um, they were never pushy they were never <laughs> they were just always there on the side of the field supporting us and rushing us from one sports event to another and they had three kids all sporty so <laughs> very little time for themselves but luckily their passion was sport too so they enjoyed it they really took took joy from watching each one of us in our sport. Tell us a little bit about where this, you know, this, this Russell sporting heritage comes from. Both my folks were very sporty. My mother played provincial tennis, badminton, hockey, and my dad was similar, played provincial rugby. So um, we've just followed in their footsteps. And um, I think that's where I first saw hockey was on the side of the field watching my mom in her master's league oh, wow. <laughs> play hockey at Inanda club here. So, so um, yeah, they, they obviously had a big influence in us getting to where we were. Do you think that that's something that, I mean, you say that as soon as you have your baby, you want to actually get back to training and get back on the field. How important is it that moms almost teach through showing you know so just like your mom she brought you to the side of the of 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 the uh, hockey field so that you you saw her having fun and enjoying herself uh, and that's why you became passionate about sports i'd like to think that has an influence so i definitely will be carrying on with my sport whether it's at a club level or whatever and all sorts of sports we will myself and my husband will obviously encourage that and yeah, as you say, probably through the showing, hopefully we can impart some passion. And um, I've been trying my hand and really trying to get into golf at the moment. And I've said from the moment that child can hold a golf club, <laughs> I want to play <laughs> golf. Because I think it'll be so much easier when you start at that age than when you're at my age trying to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you think back on the best uh, coaching lesson that you were ever given, what was it? Each person I came in contact with along the way helped me with where I am in my journey now. And um, I, I believe as, as much opportunity as you can take part in, do it as a, as a young child, you know. There's so much more we've got these days, even with social media and, you know, you're able to YouTube hockey these days and watch it on TV. I think um, it must be so fantastic for the youth to be able to gain inspiration from that and, you know, be able to practice skills that they see on, you know, that, that type of thing we didn't have. So, yeah. <laughs> You've certainly got access to so much more knowledge. Exactly. Shelley, away from the hockey field, other than being uh, very competitive and trying her hand at golf, what do you do for fun? I love being outdoors, so, um, you know, the novelty of now being down at the coast. I grew up in Johannesburg and now I live in Durban, so I spend quite a lot of time in the beach. I love snorkeling and being in the ocean. Um, I love watching series. <laughs> which, is, which is your favourite? <laughs> I've got many. I've probably got about five or six series at, running at the same time. I'm really enjoying Rain at the moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I must say, oh, I, I don't watch many series, so I'm just going <laughs> let's just, let's just move uh, straight along. Uh, music. Along. Music. Oh, I love a bit of everything. Okay. So is there one song in particular that uh, kind of brightens your day or that you have to put on when you're feeling a little bit down? No, not one in particular. Okay. Lots. Lots of combinations. My husband does sometimes roll his eyes because I sometimes like those girly, you know, beats that I sing along to. And that's not quite his taste. So we <laughs> sometimes have difference of an opinion in, in music. But, but yeah, no, I like a bit of everything. And your ideal holiday destination? Anything on an island. So I think our honeymoon to Maldives was probably one that oh, sticks yeah. out. But yeah, anything near a beach, 
is wonderful. But fortunately, with the hockey, I've had a lot of opportunity to travel and I've really made the most of it. You know, at the end of a hockey tour, when the rest of the team's flying back, I'm usually flying to the closest island or something just to just for a week extra vacation or something, just to see, see the world. I really have a passion to, to see as much of the world as I can. They often say that if you want to know somebody, then you must meet them in a crisis or you must be alongside them in a very, very difficult situation. So just imagine your house is burning and you can only save three things. Yeah, my photo albums and my um, hard drive and stuff that's got all of that. Um, I would definitely grab my dog. <laughs> <laughs> my dog. I presume I don't have to grab my husband. He's got his own legs. He can, he can, he can run off. <laughs> Third thing. Sure, that's tough. <laughs> can I come back to that? <laughs> you, you can come back to it. Tweet it later okay. or Instagram post it okay. later. You'll tell us there. Okay. Um, if you had one piece of advice that you'd like to give to, to young players, to, to young women who see you as an inspiration, what would it be? I've, um, I've witnessed a lot of girls going through disappointment throughout their school, school life where, you know, sport and stuff doesn't quite happen for them at school level. And... I just want to say to them, I've seen so many people picking up sport and making it to a national level when they've picked it up late at high school or they've, you know, at varsity, they've, they've suddenly come into their own. You know, they've never made an A team at school, but they make a national team when they're out of school. I've seen so many situations like that. So I want to encourage girls that, that almost give up too early and, you know, they, they feel like they sports maybe not for them because they're not achieving at school level. It's not about school. <laughs> I mean, school is where you get foundation, but it's really not about school. It's about what happens afterwards. And then an, more advice I'd give them is when the opportunity does come, yeah. to grab it with both hands. Because um, the story I love telling is seeing my brother, you know, he was hardly on the rugby scene and um, he ended up filling in at the rugby um, Springbuck trials and he just saw it as an opportunity and everyone at the end of the trials was asking who's this guy who's yeah. carved through people and this yeah. cheeky little you know youngster who took the ball and scored some tries and and yeah he made the Springbuck team after that and I mean that if that's not taking your opportunities when it comes then I think that story always sticks with me. Good luck with the pregnancy. We can't wait for you to tweet those pictures when the baby <laughs> arrives finally. And uh, yes, we look forward to seeing you back stronger on the hockey field once again to get to that mark of 300 caps for the South African National Women's Hockey Team. Thank you. All right, that Thanks. was <laughs> Shelley Russell Jones, our game changer for today. Uh, what an inspiration. Remember that uh, you are welcome to send us your ideas of trailblazers and stories about women in sport that inspire you and motivate you, even those that maybe you don't like and you think we should investigate, explore and discuss a little bit more here in studio. Our social media details, well, they're on the screen so you can get in touch and who knows, you may become part of our show. Remember, until we meet again, that greatness is earned and never ever given. Thanks for watching. From myself and the entire Ladies Club team, goodbye.